Welcome to The Teapot Reads. I'm The Teapot. This is what I'm currently reading and I'm so happy to see you today. It is a very cozy, pretty early winter morning. Uh, I say pretty early. It is like 8.30 now, but I've been up since about 6 because the dog needed to go out and I've been taking care of him and I took the morning to watch some Gilmore Girls and I was like, you know what? I should film a video and the video I'm filming is how... I have changed opinions on certain books and certain ratings as time has passed and I wanted to do books that I've read this year through November because it is December and I haven't finished anything this month but I want to talk about how maybe over the course of several months my opinion on the ratings I originally gave certain reads has changed. So this happens to me a lot. Not necessarily a lot in the same year, but the more time passes away from a book, a lot of times my opinion of it changes, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. It's kind of like the longer the story steeps within me, the more I think and feel about the book. So there are some titles on here that I have thought about for a while. I'm like, you know what? I was too, too into the book at the time, but taking a step away from it, you know, it really just wasn't that good, and I, I don't remember the good parts, I only remember the bad parts. And then there are some books here that I think about a lot in an even more positive light than I realized while I was reading it or immediately after. So it, it happens quite a bit for me, and I've, I've compiled the ones that have changed the most, not just like not just like a, a point, because when I, when I rate, I do typically like one through five stars, and then I'll give half stars, but internally I'm like, okay, well that was like 3.75. So if it would change from like a 3.75 to 3.5, I'm not gonna mention that. I don't think that's a big enough change. I think that's just the rating settling into place and maybe it'll change again at some point, but honestly it's just refining itself. It would probably be helpful to know my rating system. Five stars for me means absolutely amazing, one of my new favorites, something I will not shut up about, something I will talk about consistently, something I will recommend all the time. Five stars is the highest you can get minus like two books in my entire life, which I've considered above five stars. Those books being A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara and Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. No, I will not be taking any suggestions or opinions on either of those books at this time. Four stars for me is still really good. Four stars means that maybe there is a misstep or two that took me out of the story or that just really didn't work for me or I felt was missing, but I still really liked the book and I will still probably recommend it. I will still probably talk highly about it. I will still probably give it a place of power on my shelf so that I can look at it. Four stars, yeah, still really good. It means, it even means I would say in some, some, areas, I would say it's a great book, just not god tier like five star reads are. 3.5 stars is my true middle. It means that it was good, it means that I liked it, and it means that it was a little better than average. So even though I consider it a little better than average, I consider it my true neutral because if a book is three stars, which is average, which is just okay, it didn't do anything special for me. And a book, a story needs to be special for me to really like it, to really love it. So I consider if it's not doing anything special, it's actually on the end of reads that is a little bit of a failure for me and a little bit of something that I would say quality for me just isn't there. So that's three and three stars and three and a half stars. Two stars is the book was bad, but not offensively so. And then one star is it was trash fire, garbage, offensively bad, maybe it had major missteps, maybe it was outright, outright racist or sexist or just awful. So that's what one star means. One star is do not bother with it. I don't actually get a lot of one stars because I tend to DNF books that are headed down that path. It's been a very long time since I've had a one star book to start with. Books that have changed their reviews this year from me. Um, let's talk about the Seducing the Sedgwick series by Kat Sebastian. I read these a while ago. I don't remember if I posted a review for them. I don't think so. I think I just put it in a wrap-up. If I can find the wrap-up, I will link it above. 
and below because I did talk about them and a lot of what I thought about them. These are Regency romances. They're queer Regency romances. All three are gay. This is the first one. This is Takes Two to Tumble. Number two is A Gentleman Never Keeps Score. And then number three is Two Rogues Make a Right, which is just one of the cutest covers, in my opinion. I think it's really adorable. This is the book that when I was looking for queer Regency romances, because this was right after I finished watching Bridgerton, and I was like, wow, that was great, but where are all the gay people? Uh, there's like two. Um, I was like, okay. So I, I looked into it and this is the one I found, but every review was like, read them in order. And I do, I agree with that. You should read them in order. This is a lot better having read it in order, but it's still really, really cute. But <laughs> let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the first one. It takes two to tumble. I rated this higher than it probably deserved. I gave it three and a half originally. I'm docking it to three stars. I think it really was just average. It wasn't bad. It really wasn't. It was just really boring. The chemistry between the characters really wasn't there. The characters themselves weren't really interesting. And I think I was just really into Regency romances at the time. So I kind of caved into the hype. And I also really wanted this to be a better book than it was. I was like, yeah, three and a half stars as of trying to convince myself post reading. So yeah, I'm kind of, I'm taking half a star away from this. But on the flip side, I gave this four stars originally. I have to bump it up to four and a half. It has sat with me so well. I think about it all the time. It's one of those books that I will go back through and flip to my favorite scenes and just read to feel happy. It really is great. It's not perfect. It didn't dive as much into the characters as I wish it would have. Like there are a lot of moments that hint at the characters past especially traumatic parts of their past and the book really doesn't dive into it it just kind of walks around them it doesn't it doesn't apologize like it doesn't it doesn't minimize the impact that these traumatic events have had on the characters it just doesn't go as far into them as i the reader would have liked and would have really appreciated so that's really the biggest misstep with this book, but it is so cute. It has sat with me so well. I just, I recommend it all the time. I always keep it in stock at work. Like, Two Rogues Make a Right is a great, a great book. And I know I said you should read it in order. If you're not interested in reading the series in order, this is the one to pick up. It's just everything, okay? It's adorable. Oh my God, the next book. <laughs> the next book. So I I read I read these in January. The next book I also read in January, and that was The Night Train. I don't even remember the author. I have unhauled this book. I read it because a coworker recommended it, and I, I was like, oh yeah, okay, I want to be friends with this person. They seem cool. I'll bump it to the top of my list. That was a mistake. This book was really bad. Uh, I, I just thought it was okay at the time of reading it. I gave it three and a half stars originally. It's, it's like two and a half stars. It had some interesting ideas. It had, I will say it had an interesting message at the end. It is a sort of sci-fi type story. It gives like Snowpiercer vibes, but like if Snowpiercer was on a smaller scale, I guess. It just, it really wasn't, it wasn't anything great. It wasn't even very good. I unhauled it a while ago. I regret spending money on it. Like, yeah, just, just an all around mistake. Ooh, sorry, Night Train. You're not for me. These next two. Some more Regency romances. You can definitely see the effect Bridgerton had on me in the early months of this year. And yes, I was in the middle of filming a very long term Bridgerton video that has been on hiatus for a while, but I do hope to finish it and post at some point. I think it's going to be really interesting now that it's had this major break in the middle. But in March, I read book two of the Bridgerton series, The Viscount Who Loved Me. I really don't like these books. I really wanted to like these books. I really don't. I find them incredibly problematic and very boring. Um, I originally gave those four and a half stars. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, it seems insane now, thinking back on it and just like only have negative things to think about these books. I will say, the sexual tension in this book is there. This book, the, the characters in this book, Antony and Ed, um, Kate, <laughs> Kate, Antony and Kate, 
the chemistry between them is the best of any of the Bridgerton books I've read so far. It is just perfect. I cannot wait for season two, like, and just, it's great. I also loved Anthony in the show, who's my favorite character easily. I loved him. Was he my favorite because I thought he was the most attractive? Quite possibly. But I'm not gonna judge myself for that. So I, I, but four and a half stars, it was not that good. It was not that good, not even sort of that good. It was awful. It had so many problematic elements. I'm ashamed of myself for rating it that highly. I just, I think I really, 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 really wanted it to be better than it was. I am, I'm bumping this down to three stars just because of the sexual tension. It's great, it was hot. It was a little hot, it was a lot hot, but it was not a good book. Three stars and another Bridgerton. Um, this is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. This is book four, I think, of them all that I've read so far. This one was the least problematic. I will give it that, but I gave it four stars, which is not, not quite accurate. I'm bumping it down to three and a half stars because it was really boring. I liked the characters in this and I actually thought that of all the pairings, these two characters were the most developed. I think because we had the chance to see both of them for the longest period of time. So I did appreciate that and I, I really liked that. The chemistry was just kind of there. The ending really disappointed me. I have a lot to say about the ending. It was, it's a trope that I really hate in literature where the women give up something very important to them and the men don't. There's another book on this list that has that trope. It just, it just, it gets, it gets three and a half stars for being unproblematic comparatively to the rest of the books in the series that I've read so far and I've read most of them so not not looking good Bridgerton oh so this one this kind of hurts my heart that I'm changing the review a little bit and that is first become ashes by K.M. Spara I loved his first book docile which came out last year I think or two years ago I read it last year it was amazing I read it in like 24 hours I could not stop reading it so I was super super stoked for first become ashes I do have a vlog up for this book I believe so I'll post that above and below it was just, it just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I, I initially rated it five stars. That I think is totally unfair. I think that was just me kind of hyping it based off of my love for the author more than the actual thoughts I had of the book. I'm changing the review to four and a half stars. So that might still be a little generous because they were just, my, my biggest problem was just that there were moments where I felt easily taken out of the story or like not much was happening. I, I also wanted a little, a little more of certain characters and I just didn't get it, just a personal opinion, but I'm going to keep it at four and a half stars. I do recommend this book. It's really good. It's really, really good if you're reading it as like a meta commentary on how fantasy as a genre works. I think it does a really fantastic job at that. So I, I just I just posted my autumn wrap up and I have the reviews of, of two of these books in there and it's a little late for me to be changing it, but I am changing it. And one of those is Hooky. This is a graphic novel by Miriam Bonaster Tar, Bonaster Tar. Um, it's really good, it's really cute. It, has super nostalgic vibes for me. It is a hundred percent something I would have gone absolutely crazy for as a child and wanted to pretend I was like living in the world of, um, like it's got Ghibli vibes a little bit. Anyway, it's, it's great. It's really good. I gave it five stars. Um, I'm going to change it to four and a half stars, kind of for similar reasons that I changed First Become Ashes. I really liked it but there were a lot of moments that took me out of the story or allowed myself to extricate from the story far too easily. There are just some lulls that were boring and 
it happens. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't think it deserves five stars if I literally had no trouble putting it down. I'm still really excited for book two. I still think very highly of this book, but you know, I think I just had that nostalgic hype too much at the time that it made me be like, yes, this is obviously amazing. Like it was, it was good. It was really, really good, but it wasn't amazing. Okay. And then this one, I think this is the, oh no, the, uh, cause, um, another book also went up, but this is, this is the only book to go up to five stars. This is Small Favors by Erin and Craig. I was terrified while listening to the audiobook of this book. I, like, I was so scared. I'm not a big horror person at all, but I have got to change this rating to five stars. I think I originally had it at four and a half, but it's so good. I cannot shut up about this book. I have told everyone I know to read it. I talk about it at work all the time. I recommend it all the time. It is so good. I think about it a lot. I am a big fan. I'm a very big fan and um that's that that's why I'm changing that's why I'm changing my review because I just it's so good it is so good it's a shame I didn't rate it five stars originally it definitely deserved that I think I was just so freaked out by it um mm -hmm. but retrospectively I think it was pretty near perfect so those are all the ones that changed I also thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about three books or four books actually that their ratings didn't change but in going through all the ratings I'd given this year I was surprised by myself or I thought it would surprise you that I rated these this way. Um, so number one I read it back in January this is House on the Cerulean Sea I don't know where my copy is. I gave this one three stars. I know this is a lot of people's one of their favorite books. I um I didn't like it. I in fact disliked it, I think. There were things I liked. I really liked the Antichrist. I I really liked the aesthetic of the book, but it was just very blah. There were so many things happening that felt like there could be tension because of them, but instead were solved far too easily. The chemistry between the protagonist um, and his love interest, they, I mean, I know that wasn't the central part of the story, but even, even as, like, a side part, they're just, I, I felt like the characters had very little to base their relationship on. I was just like, it was blah. It was very blah. Not a book for me. So yeah, that's three stars. I'm not changing that. I'm not rating it higher. I'm not like, rating it lower. I have a copy. I might unhaul my copy. I don't know. I was just incredibly disappointed by this book. Uh, no, oh my god, another book that just freaking disappointed me and I, I've done a vlog and I've done a review for this book and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Zara J. Mass. Give it three stars. That might be even slightly generous, but I'm not gonna change it. I don't have any words for this. Go, uh, go watch my review because I think I ranted it out there. But even the further I get away from this book, the more I'm like, what a disappointment. What an incredible disappointment. Okay, this book. This book surprised me and that was from Blood and Ash. I I thought I wasn't gonna read this book or this series for a very long time. It just didn't seem like something I'd be interested in, but there were so many pretty special editions and I couldn't stop myself. I was like, okay, fine. I'll pick up the special editions and I'll read it that way. I've only read the first one so far. I've only read this one. And I gave it three and a half stars and I'm totally sticking with that, but I I was surprised that I actually did enjoy it and I had fun reading it. It had a lot of issues, but it was a fun book and I liked that. I haven't had a lot of like books that I can like look at and see that was just fun. Like I didn't get anything else out of it except just some fun. I thought that was nice. And then finally, couple months ago, August, I read Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. This is my second Jane Austen that I've read. I've read Pride and Prejudice a couple times now and I really want to read all her works. I just, there's not enough time in the year. I gave it three and a half stars. I'm sticking with that. I'm a little sad because it is in Austen and I freaking love Pride and Prejudice, but a lot of the early parts of the book really drag it down. I, I mean, it was one of her unpublished until she was passed away books. They called it posthuman. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't say that. And it kind of feels like it could have done with a little more editing. 
maybe if she had lived a little longer, we would have gotten more editing. The, the latter half of the book, At Northanger Abbey, was fantastic. I really loved it. It was just the first half. It just was very boring. There were a lot of characters that just... Eh. And also the wrap-up of the romance was kind of... Eh. I actually, the further I get from the book, the more I like the end of the romance, but not enough to really change my rating. But yeah, three and a half stars for this Jane Austen. Very sad because I love Jane, but we all have a... We all have a... A bad spot. <laughs> so... So that's it. That's it. I, I hope you found this interesting. It was fun for me to look back and reflect on ratings and reviews I'd given. My opinion hadn't changed super. Well, it ha on the books it changed for, it changed a lot. Like, I feel like an idiot for having rated the Bridgerton books as highly as I did. Like, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. But otherwise, it was more like a like, I didn't feel stupid for changing my opinions on any of the other ones. I just feel like, okay, maybe I should take a step back before I start rating books. That's it for me. Thank you for being here. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed. Thank you for watching my videos and listening to me. It means the world. If you are not subscribed, but you liked this video and you want to see more similar content, definitely subscribe. I post weekly. If you are somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. If you are somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you are reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye!